it has been forever since I last did a stream. Uh, so I will I've just press the start button straight away. Um, so we're going to have a look at the uh, the what we're we doing on the web browser for the Mega 65 today. Uh, but first, let me just announce to folks around the place. Okay, let me just post that to Twitter as well. I should copy and paste what I've written there, so a bit of typing, so the new folks aren't hanging around for quite so long. Teaser image to that. Tweet. Right, oh. Howdy, folks. Say howdy in the chat window if you look and see that there's two of you lurking there already. So, what have I been up to the last few days? So, I've been working my way through a whole bunch of. Um, bugs in the Ethernet uh, controller VHDL. The <laughs> final bugs proved to be quite fascinating. I was writing to the receive buffers from the wrong clock, and so it was getting written most of the time, but not all of the time, and you wouldn't believe the strange effects that that was causing in the received data. Uh, and then on top of that, uh, there was some issues with actually managing the buffers to make sure that we're reading and writing to the correct ones and that it's not out of step. Uh, so what I might actually start with on that um, is show you the um, the network stack working. So we all know Wireshark uh, on big computers. Um, on the Mega 65, we have Wirecrill, something a bit smaller. Um, what I might do, we don't really need to see the keyboard just at the minute, so let me just fade to solid there. So this is on the Mega 65's um, 100 megabit uh, Ethernet interface um, straight out the back of it. So it's just seeing whatever fluff is going past on the network uh, here at home. So there's you know, some random devices announcing themselves semi regularly. And if I help it along, if I do a, um, uh, a ping, um, we should start seeing the ping packets and I can actually press a uh, key that will filter. So it really just shows the, uh, the ping packets happening there and so they're coming through you know uh, in a timely manner which is good so one of the problem with that buffer management before um, was that the uh, <laughs> it would take it would get put in at the wrong end of this set of 32 um, set um, frame buffers right so you have to wait for 31 more frame Ethernet frames to arrive before you actually saw the correct one so it was like living in the past um, so fix that now um, which is good um, and yeah as a result we now have a good stable uh, Ethernet connectivity which is goodness gracious me it has taken so long um, but I'm so glad that we have it now hey DJ um, Dethy great to have you lurking on there um, so now let's actually load up the current work on uh, the fetch web browser like thing for the mega 65 so hey dan great to see you there as well um so a little bit there's a few things that are worth mentioning about this um so the idea is it will let you browse a kind of web it's not running html um because making a html parse and all that is a whole pile of work so instead of going for a bit of a uh, 8-bit bare metal approach we've got a format that i'm calling h65 uh, which really what it is is a structured memory dump of the chip RAM of the Mega 65. Uh, so what this means is that in a page you can put screen RAM in, including for RRB, so uh, raster rewrite uh, buffer, so you, for layers and all that kind of fun stuff. And you can put um, you know, 
uh, yes, you have the screens, you can have text and all that kind of thing uh, in there. Uh, you can have graphics because you can have FCM and NCM characters and you can lay them out however you want. Um, so there's basically set areas of chip RAM that the pages are allowed to say, write this stuff here. Um, and there's also certain VIC-4 registers that they're allowed to say, I want this value in this register to set the display up in a particular way so that you can you know, set the, uh, the page layout uh, and all that kind of thing. Uh, and then the browser, um, the, to render, all it does is it just sets those registers and has that memory loaded, and then it's displaying exactly what it needs to. Um, and it will um, scroll up and down because it knows where the, um, the screen RAM should start. That's kind of part of the standard. Uh, and we'll uh, display it all with that. So now I will, oh, hang on. Uh, did I see a boot to 64 mode first, says Dethy. Yeah, so at the moment, um, fetch is made to run to start from 64 mode. We will fix this down the track. It's just my convenient workflow. Um, and the C64 memory setup leaves us a bit more RAM free um, for code when we're using CC65. So what we will actually do is we'll make a, a loader that from C65 mode loads it in and rejigs the memory around so that we get the effect that we want, uh, but you will start it then from Mega 65 mode um, uh, in the end. So uh, that'll be good. Oh, and we've got a third look at Hey, Ludon, great to have you lurking there as well. Yeah, yeah, guten Morgen. Well, it's guten Abend für dich auch. Um, Good morning. Yes, morning in Germany. It's afternoon here in uh, in Australia. So first, well, second day of daylight saving. So um, yeah, a bit of an evening on a uh, public holiday here for us before I go back to work. So um, we have the um, uh, the start screen for the uh, uh, the fetch browser here. Um, <laughs> Dan saying it's midnight where he is. Uh, so what I will do, I will fade in so you can see the computer behind. So here is a dodgy, cheap wireless mouse from wherever. And in the joystick port, you probably can't quite see it from there, but we've got a, if you can pull it out temporarily, right? Uh, it's a mouster. Um, so that's the nine pin Commodore Atari S, um, uh, and ST and Amiga port. And you can put a USB mouse on the back, or in this case, I've got a wireless mouse, right? So I just put the, uh, the wireless doohick in there. And if I put that in port one, um, I can very comfortably use the, you, you saw it there, right? So there's another use for the, uh, the tray. Uh, so we can use the mouse, even in this menu, uh, to actually go, right, well, let's choose a thing that we want to look at. Um, and so we've got it so that it works out where you are, so you can see, so it's all nice and highlighted. Um, and yeah, so that's nice and convenient. So let's, so actually the, the showdown one, I'll, uh, actually we might start with that. So this is one where we made the, uh, the page up uh, this morning, I think it was. And you can see it there. Let me just get it back to solid. So here we have, uh, mouse back here for me, um, the page loaded. And so you can see it, it, it looks quite nice. We've got the uh, the image in the page. And you also see, see when I the mouse over the image, it's blinking between blue and light blue. Whereas it goes through all the colors when it's off the image. That's because the image is actually a clickable link. Um, it's not going to go anywhere particularly useful in this page at the moment, but that's okay. Uh, we've got a regular link here where the, the alt text is the URL. Um, that won't work at the moment either because, again, at the moment it only supports H65. Uh, but you can see I can scroll. So I'm just using the mouse to scroll up and down. Um, I will show one little thing that I added in with this. Um, we know that the home key on the C64, the home key will jump you to the top of the page. Um, as you'd expect, so I can scroll all the way down. I can use the cursor keys up and down to to scroll around, um, but I can always press home to jump back to the top of the page. So, you know, a nice uh, C64 uh, you know, style of doing things there. Um, actually, I can't remember where that link goes to. Maybe it just, oh, it links back to itself, right. 
Um, well, that's kind of convenient for showing a few things in here, right? So the you can see when it loads. So it drops back to 40 column, just showing kind of things. It's past the URL to work out where the host is. The When the border goes white, that's when it's processing packets. When it's black, it's waiting for the next packet. Um, and we can see that on these subsequent loads, it doesn't have to redo the um, uh, the DNS, sorry, the DHCP. In actual fact, that's screwed up. It should just be displaying stuff on the screen as it goes, but it's probably just overwriting itself. I should probably clear the screen each time when it goes in to do that. So let's make a note to um, uh, to do that. Uh, and so we can also, uh, again, on the, um, the keyboards, oops, I can press G. Um, to choose go to a URL and I can go through my recent browser history. Um, so if I pick one of those and hit enter on it, it copies it to the top and then you press enter again to open it. And so that gives us the opportunity to change the URL. And hopefully if I haven't fluffed things up, it should load the index page. Um, which is cool. Hey, welcome to whoever the fourth person is that's lurked on. Um, feel free to, uh, to say howdy in the chat there. Um, so this is, again, it's default pages that I've made. So these have all been rendered from markdown files. And I'll show the uh, the converter uh, for that in a moment. Um, but again, we can see we've got images. And so that image is clickable. We've got some other links that are around here that are uh, clickable, so this should be a, a pretty simple, boring one. I need to find out why it's not updating on the um, uh, the screen there, but that's right. Yeah, so <laughs> this page is yet to be written. So here's an opportunity for folks to actually write some markdown that I can convert into these H65 pages to make a um, uh, a website for the Mega 65 that the Mega 65 itself uh, can access. Uh, and so I can click on back to go back. The other thing that I can do to go back a page um, is I can use the um, the back arrow next to the one key. And this will go back to the previous uh, page that I was on. And we've got a, <laughs> a simple but out of date page about fetch itself, which we should probably um, oh, okay, so something is fluffed up there. So it's jumped to this at the moment. If there is any error loading a page, it just jumps back to uh, to here. So, uh, and there, like, there are still bugs in this, obviously. Um, so we can try to load it again. Nope, so it's still having grief. So we'll just go back and we'll just load the index back up. If this fails, then we know that it's got corrupted somewhere uh, in memory. Right, so we're back there. Um, oh, that's right, I added a couple of pages with just some lorem ipsum text. Oops. Hey, Twitch Igor, welcome along. So this is really just to, again, to demonstrate the... Um, the text you can see it's nice smooth scrolling with the mouse um, if they update the firmware on the mouse that we may actually be able to add support for the scroll wheel which would be really lovely but you know as I say in the meantime we can you know you can scroll down wherever you want we can hit home we can jump back to the top um, so if we come back down and go back to the index Uh, let's just try that fetch again one more time, just curious now. Hey, and welcome along to some extra folks have jumped on. Good to have you along. Oh, now it's loaded this time. Right. So again, just a, a simple page about that. We can just hop back to the index. I'll just hit the uh, that left arrow key. And this should be able to be faster again than it is now. The um, So the TCP stack is written in C um, and it's been compiled with CC65, which is not the fastest C compiler. 
and so it's likely that the um, uh, you know the sending end on a modern machine is interpreting the um, the slow response as congestion, and so it's not ramping up particularly quickly. That's okay. Um, so otherwise, the things that we currently support with the automatic uh, converter from uh, Markdown to H65, we can have underlined titles. Uh, if we put a hash in a, a line of text, to asterisks either side of text, uh, we'll make them bold by just drawing them in yellow for the moment. Um, text obviously comes out in, this is an ASCII font, but C64 style ASCII font. Um, so you can have, you know, round curly brackets and underscores and all that kind of fluff in there um, without a problem. Uh, you've got more bold text. We can have the links, we can have images, and we can have the, um, uh, the links behind images. Um, hey, Maurice, great to have you along as well. Um, so that's all it supports at the moment. But as I say, that's just because it's you know, a tool that I crocked together pretty quickly just to make test pages. Um, the same way that we do the nice proportional anti-aliased text in the megawatt uh, PowerPoint clone that we made, um, we could actually do that in here. So again, because it will all be server-side rendered and you, you know, it can work all the, the bits and pieces out. Um, and so that could make much, much nicer looking textual pages than we have at the moment with you know, currently using the fixed width font. Um, yeah, <laughs> so Maurice says, calling while he's in the Turkey... Um, see how long his connection lasts. Hopefully long enough. Hopefully long enough. Um, so yeah, so this is a starting point uh, to make something that will be a whole lot nicer, but it's pretty cool that it's, you know, we are browsing the web um, with the Mega 65 uh, in reality. So actually, so someone, uh, so, so uh, Ludon is saying, are you currently running 100 meg or 10 meg ethernet? This is 100 meg. So I fixed all the bugs with 100 meg ethernet. Um, in fact, I'll never actually finish getting the 10 meg mode working because we shouldn't need to use it for anything. Um, at some point though, if people are desperate for it, we can finish it. Uh, but this is all on 100 megabit ethernet. So in theory, we can do 10 megabytes a second. As I say at the moment, the TCP stack is a bit uh, lethargic uh, in there. So yeah, that's all right. So that's what we've got with uh, uh with fetch at the moment as i say i'm going to improve the the error handling so it actually comes up and says yes there's been an error that's happened and what do you want to do about it uh some way to get back to that main screen to save and load your uh, uh your browser history and all that kind of thing um but the other thing that's fun that we can do now that we have the uh the tcp stack working if i reset the mega 65 Uh, we've got other network software that is working. We have the BBS client that we started work on ages and ages and ages ago. And this is much, much nicer to use now than it was. Now, remember, I'm in Australia, right? So there is quite bad latency to a lot of these um, uh, BBSs uh, for me at the best of time. And of course, a bunch of these are running on real uh, C64 or 128 hardware at the other end, right? Um, so here's the, the Boar's Head uh, Tavern. We saw that once it started loading, that's come up really quickly. When you Those who've used an earlier version of this will remember it would kind of get a packet and then it would kind of do nothing for a while and then it would just do a bit more and it was really frustrating to, um, uh, to use. Uh, Let's see, I think I have an account on here, but I can't remember it. Uh, yep, okay, hit the key to carry on. Alias. Put my scene handle in. Location. Australia. Let's so you can see the, uh, uh, the keyboard there a bit easier. I had this problem. I don't know whether it's a bug in um, the terminal program or not, but I can't send the at character. Let's 
let's put quotes in, they can figure it out. Real name, Paul. Let's just do that for now, since we're streaming this for the world to see. So you have to fix the password after as well. Computer, this is the fun bit now, right? Because we are on a Mega 65 R3A. Birth date, yes, I have one. References. Oh, who should I put in? Here? We'll dob in. Bacchus. Correct. Here we go. <laughs> and we need scroll back because <laughs> it goes past too quickly. Um, so we should definitely add scroll back into this uh, terminal. We should add support for the mouse like we've done in, um, uh, in Fetch. So this terminal program could really do with a bit of love uh, from someone. But you can see, uh, yeah, pause would be simpler as well. Although the, the pause isn't really a complete solution because if the, whoops, if the network comes through uh, quickly, then like, you know, again, because it's 100 megabits, right? So once the packets come, it's just, and it's just there. Um, and at 40 megahertz, it doesn't take so long to draw either. So yeah, I think we need to have scroll back or um, automatic page pausing. Uh, So you'll just get the, so you can see the keyboard a bit again. You can see as I'm choosing things. Yeah, there's a bit of delay, but again, you know, I'm in Australia. This BBS is not. Um, let's have a look at the at the pub quiz. So yes, lag from the other side of the world is a bit annoying at times, but that's all right. I think we're on there. Uh, where's the art at? Um, Deathy is asking. So this is whoever has made this BBS. Um, so this is Boar's Head uh, BBS. Um, and yeah, Ludon, uh, thanks for the uh, uh, the comment there. It's, yes, it's a nice improvement on what it was uh previously and i don't know why the pub quiz didn't load what's in the latrine today no nope, i don't know why it's not showing anything there we'll sign out of this one hey gehef welcome along ah Deathy's saying there's probably a section with art in it. Right. I have no idea uh, if anyone knows this BBS more f intimately than I do. Will it let me... I think I have to do it the hard way. Well, let's have a look and see if we can get into the Herald.
Nope. Not sure why. Let's hop down the bottom. Oh, okay, Death is saying you may, so maybe you don't have access to anything yet. Yeah, this is quite likely the case, right? And it's probably some really important thing about that in all that text that flew past. Um, which, in theory, one of you might be able to rewind the stream and read and tell me. Um, we'll sign out, and I think this has an option to say something on the way out. Aspire to leave, verily. I'm not sure that that's quite supposed to look like that. Whether there was a, a bit shift on the um, the actual modem. Uh, so Marie says, are you now using real Mega 65 hardware? Yeah, that's what you can see in the background. So, but up. That's the, the real machine that's actually doing this. Oops. Ah, try and get it. Right, that looks like a good balance. So let's... Go into another BBS. So I'm, I'm pushing the um, uh, the software from my laptop. Um, that's the only thing that's not happening from the uh, the 8-bit hardware. Okay, so I reckon Antidote was another one that was working when I tried it earlier. But if anyone has a quick, you know, like five seconds to someone to vote for a BBS for me to try and to connect to from here. Five, four, three, two, one. Nope. Right. We'll go for that. It's probably actually more streaming. Oh, okay. Down was very slightly too slow. We'll try Oasis in a moment after that then. You are today's caller number three, and I was caller number one as well, so someone else has been on in the meantime. Um... Is the keyboard annoying through that in the background, or is it kind of cool to be able to see the um, uh, the hardware that's doing it at the same time? <laughs> There's a bit of um, poop on the bottom there. It's HTTP slash one, blah, blah, blah. That might have come from whatever interface that they're using. So it might have um, dropped the line. It's the joys of BBSs, right? So we'll try Oasis now. Yeah, he yeah, saying, wow, that Triad logo takes me back to the 80s. It, it does. Yeah, that Triad logo and then the, um, you know, that uh, really common Fairlight uh, intro with the uh, the music from Druid in it with the, um, you know, the, the raster bars going up and down. Color 64 BBS, you are connected at 2400 board. Well, 100 million board, but that's okay. Um, the last caller was awaiting input. Right. Press return to log in. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that is uh, humming it in text on the, um, uh, the thing. Uh, are you using a Commodore graphic terminal program? Yes, we absolutely are. <laughs> Very cool. So I haven't logged into this one at all before, I don't reckon. Because this is really the first time that the, the thing has been, uh, the uh, terminal software and the network stack has been stable enough uh, to do this without it being painful. That looks cool. Of course, the other thing we haven't done with this terminal program yet is make it um, 80 column and or 50 row. Right, because if we make it 50 row, you could actually have, uh, you know, two screens worth. On the <laughs> blink with lag. OK, 
okay I've pressed any key to continue maybe it's not really any key might have something fishy going on there too we'll try another one uh, Dan is saying are we seeing network lag from Australia or deficiencies in the TCPIP stack we're certainly seeing lag from Australia that is absolutely um, a component of this uh, so I would suspect that to get to a C64 on the other side of the world um, that it's probably going to be of the order of one to two seconds of lag um, depending on what hardware that they've got uh, along the way so um, who wants to pick the next BBS or does anyone know any of these BBSs Uh, Anarchy Underground, right, M. And if folks want to type in other BBSs that they'd like to see uh, after that, let me know as well. Oh, this one might not be up. Uh, Luden saying Targets was just posting borderline pictures on Discord. Uh, oh, he's connecting. That's cool. So he's hopped onto borderline. So yeah, there may well be. Yeah, I mean, again, this is a starting point, right? Okay, so this one I think is not online. So if anyone wants to pick another BBS while I um, restart it. do look at one last one and then uh, I better go and organize the troops dinner because it is very much dinner time here um, let's go the hidden on E oh, oh, it's a bit faster with a ultimate 64 on the other end and a mega 65 on this end um, phone right I don't think an Australian phone number is quite going to fit into that here we can see there's a bit error there that that two has come out as a five but that's right Uh, right, so Dan's asking, is the Mega 65 Wii IP repo ready for others to play with? I'm curious about build instructions. Make alone isn't enough or must be missing components. Um, it should be. So on maybe on coding or application software, uh, we can have a, uh, a chat about that. 
We're going to put a temporary password in. Whoops. <coughs> I can type it would be great. Oh. Now I typed that correctly, so I reckon we might be seeing actual serial errors on the um, the modem to the mega, to the um, ultimate 64 on the other end, but it's a bit hard to know. Okay, we'll stop it at that. On the basis, it's time for me to go and organise dinner for the trees. But hopefully, that's been fun for folks to have a look and see uh, how the uh, the whole network stack and everything is progressing. So, yep, more work to do, but um, it's really nice to see it actually usable now. So, I'd love to see folks um, host some H65 content uh, on their uh, web servers that they have control over. Um, so you don't need a special web server. It's just the pages have to be in a special format. Um, so I'm happy to help out, you know, grab me on um, hash application software on the Mega 65 Discord. Uh, and I'll help you out with um, uh, doing the conversion. And if anyone wants to improve that uh, launch screen for the, um, uh, for fetch, I'd love for that to look really cool and dynamic uh, instead. Uh, <laughs> what's the date up there? Yeah, so I've, my RTC is set to some strange month and I'm running an old version of ROM because I haven't bothered to uh, update it on there yet because um, I'm so rarely in BASIC, um, which I need to do. I need to update uh, everything. Um, but yeah, it'd be great to have this looking way cooler. We could have some active content, scroll, music, you know, whatever you, uh, we want. Uh, and make that look really cool and likewise the um uh the programs for reporting when there's part of me http errors and all of that kind of stuff uh, there's lots of stuff now that's pretty easy entry for anyone with a bit of uh, uh coding experience that would like to uh, to make these uh programs look much cooler and behave much more nicely so yeah happy to give people the uh, the support that they need uh to do that and um yeah i'll leave it at that hopefully with the um yeah so this showdown page with the description of the game i think it's going to be one of the first pages that's going to go up so you know mega 65 native game with a mega 65 native website this is really nice so cool anyway have a great day folks or a great evening um and um we'll catch us round okay see ya